Welcome back to my garage. In the previous video, we were struggling with getting any power from my home-built supercharged 50cc two-stroke engine. I think the problem is some kind of a destructive resonance between the pulses from the roots blower and the pulses in the two-stroke engine and the pipe. There's not really any volume between the blower and the engine to speak of, and uh, more volume there would probably help. But you're probably familiar with Roltrex. They make those centrifugal superchargers with a special traction fluid uh, roller planetary drive system. Centrifugal superchargers, I'm hoping that's what it's called. That's the kind that looks like a turbo with that familiar turbine housing. The advantage for me with this kind of a supercharger versus the roots blower, there's no pulses. It's a... Uh, not a constant flow, but it's a, an even flow, even. So halfway into last week, I sent an email off to Roltrex asking if maybe they had a C8 unit laying around on a shelf or something, or maybe parts to make one. The C8 unit is the smallest one they've ever made, but it's discontinued. They replied that unfortunately the C8 range is no longer in production. I will see if I have enough parts around to build one, but I highly doubt it. An alternative is the C15-16 unit, which should work okay if you downspeed the input enough. Great news. I replied and asked if it was possible to buy a C15-16 unit directly from them. They replied that they'd had a look around through their stock system, and unfortunately we don't have all the parts to make a C8 for you. More bad news is that we can't sell directly to private customers. However, we can sponsor you a C15-16. You're welcome to visit us here in ESA. I forgot to mention in my reply before this, I said I was more than happy to fly down and have a chat and pick a unit up if they would sell one to me. I replied, thanks man, I'll call that great news. How about tomorrow? They replied, well actually when I say they, I mean he and uh, Benjamin Carlson. I will just have to check with the production team. Next week is probably better. Then Benjamin replied and said, how does Tuesday around 10.30, 11-ish sound? If you want to, we can assemble your supercharger while you are here. You're welcome to film the process. Awesome. Sounds great, I'll bring the camera. Now this little email conversation introduction thing you've just watched, I've filmed that before. Monday I brought my GoPro, drove to the airport and flew down. And I made this nice flying, traveling montage. Unfortunately, the meeting was Tuesday and this was Monday. And I got really, really, really drunk to no fault of my own. I blame all the restaurants and uh, the nice people. I probably left my bag with the GoPro unattended somewhere and it got stolen. This is where that downhill drinking spiral started at the airport. I arrived in Copenhagen and uh, realized my hotel was really close to Nihaun, which is just this big bunch of restaurants and bars scattered in one place. The weather was nice and the gin tonics were even nicer. Did you know you can get gin tonic to go in Denmark? In Norway, if you're drinking on a public street, you'll get shot or worse. I had to take a picture of the girl with the black hat there because she's the most Danish person I've ever seen. Later I realized she didn't speak the language and wasn't Danish at all. Probably an English spy or something. It was getting chilly so I had a little break in my hotel room before I got back at it in the hotel bar. And this is where I stopped taking pictures and devoted my full attention to just drinking and acting like a complete fool. I'm being punished for yesterday and also I just realized I haven't got my bag where I left the camera. Unless by some miracle I can find it, the footage is lost and so is the camera. Luckily it's just a GoPro, not my r real camera. Now I have a lot of experience with filming myself alone in the garage and I'm really comfortable doing that. Talking to the camera around other people, that's a totally different matter. I just can't, like it's so awkward I can't do it. Unless I'm getting really like familiar with the people I'm around. So uh, this will have to be a voiceover. I also realized I need a lot more practice in this documentary filmmaking genre thing. To know what to film and what to talk about and stuff like that. I'll just show the footage in uh, the order I filmed it and uh, explain along the way. I arrived at Roltrex and after saying hello to everybody I was given a tour by Benjamin. And of course I should have filmed uh, me and him talking to each other and saying hello and all the other guys there but I didn't. This is the first thing I filmed. It's the compressor wheel from a C15-16 unit. Here's the C15-16 unit compared to the old C8 unit. You can see there's uh, quite a bit of difference there. The C8 unit is uh, much smaller. 
And here's the compressor wheel from uh, one of their larger units. Quite a bit bigger. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so that test. Uh, yeah, the test and we got going to kick. One second. Um, so this here is a big engine, so we then take our compressor with. Yeah. And this engine is 110 kW. Og den makser vi ud. Okay, så bare så. Det er vores største kompressor. <laughs> og det er også sådan, at vi makser øh, bygningens strøm. Den makser vi også ud. Okay, så den makser, øh, ja. hvor vi lyfter klart. De ledninger, der løber her, det, ja. det er den, der går. Ja. <laughs> og en gang, der har vi, har vi sat ind til den. Så, <laughs> også, <laughs> så, øh, det er kraftig, ikke det? Der ryger noget, noget par højt ud. Det, øh, og så kan vi simpelthen øh, tjekke performance af den. Vi kan måle virkningsgrad, vi kan måle tryk og flow. Ja. Og olie temperatur, så vi har en samme her slag henved. Ja, det er lidt fast der. Vi har også vores skrot her, så det synes folk altid er lidt sjovt. Plus fordi den ligger over for 100.000 vis af kompressor. Ja, over ved flod. Så det er sådan set sådan lidt. Så Øhm, ja, og ind, den, den suger så fra kanisteren, suger mm. på bunden igennem filteret, og så direkte ind. Og så ind igen. Og så udgangen, den går fra udgangen igennem køleren, og så tilbage igen. Tilbage igen, ja. Øhm, og når man primer, så skal man så sørge for, at der er olie øh, fra kanisteren og helt op til. Her er det der. Ja. Ja. Men det er... Så, måden at gøre det på, det er, at man løsner den her. Så glemmer man den her. Ja. Øh, og så sætter man det tryk på med ja, no, det tryk luft, og er sikker på, at det, når det så kommer ud, ja. så lukker man så. Og der er det... Ja. Tak. First up is the oil pump unit. So you see me pressing in a bearing here. And adding various uh, retention and uh, oil pump parts. It's a tiny little uh, sliding vein pump in there. You can see that Allen key stuck in there, that's to align everything while I'm assembling. And now I'm installing those tiny little sliding veins. So, I'm going to have a lot of oil in it. It's like this, and it's like this. It's like this. Yes. Yep. And then we'll put this on. It's the same orientation as before. So, I think it's not. Let's go like this. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, cut. That's all right. Cut. Right? Oh, Yes. So? Perfect. Yep. Oops. Perfect. Okay. My wife in a. This is the driver for that oil pump. Pump is done. Check it if it's uh, running smoothly. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm pressing on the bearings for those uh, drive rollers in the in that planetary gear system without gears.
<laughs> I'm saying I could start working there. In fact, it's like the incompatible. Yeah. <laughs> There's some secret sauce with assembly of the rest of that uh, roller unit, so we skipped ahead to when it's assembled. Det er en meget voldsom klik. Det er jeg. Så? Ja. Trying to walk off the rest of that hangover. It is really beautiful out here, and there's a nice breeze. Rotrex is a really cool small company with some really cool people, nice people, and uh, just seems like the perfect workplace. Really nice people there, and they make really cool compressors. I can't thank them enough for. Uh, for giving me that unit. I'm really looking forward to start playing with it. Luckily, in spite of Denmark's constant temptation game luring me into drinking, I managed to keep off the bottle and uh, not lose my bag again. Here's the stuff I brought back. A huge thank you to Roltrex and a special thank you to Benjamin and Niklas. Thanks guys, you're awesome. Really awesome. And I'm really sorry for being so hungover. It really wasn't meant to be that way, sorry. Let's unbox this stuff and have a closer look. The special Roltrex traction fluid. Manual. You know how I love manuals. Bolts. And the actual unit itself. It's a really small and beautiful unit. An oil cooler. Some hardware. Oil filter. Clamps for... The oil reservoir, which is a really nice unit in itself, I must say. Oil line and some clamps. There's a 1 to 12.5 step up ratio here. One revolution of the input, 12.5 revolutions of the compressor wheel. This unit is capable of 200,000 RPM. I went on a little shopping spree through Pedersen's Racing, picking up various gauges, hoses, tubing, a filter and stuff. And this EFI fuel pressure down to carb fuel pressure pressure regulator with a boost reference port. You see, I've been running a draw through setup up until now with the carb sitting before the supercharger. I won't risk trying that on this unit. There's a special seal on the compressor wheel axle here which pulls air through from the compressor housing into the into the transmission housing. I don't want my methanol, nitromethane and oil blend to be sucked into the oil and contaminate it. We're going blow through. Pretend the supercharger is not there. I'm planning on doing something like this. 
and a blow off valve here. This will also give me some more plenum volume. And we can even add an intercooler if we want to. I'm going to use these parts from my crude injection setup, the high pressure pump and the filter with this high pressure to low pressure regulator with the boost reference. And I'm going to run the same card. I know many will say I should go EFI. Not yet, maybe, but not yet. That carb should be perfect for this purpose because it has only one circuit and there's no float ball. As long as I can set the base pressure to pretty much the same as it is now with the level the tank is sitting at. And with the boost reference, this should in theory work really well. We'll see. This is Friday and I really want to get the video out today. So all of this stuff will happen next week. See you next time.